The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Hour. my pleasure to be here on this third day of May. And the Dow is down 242. It was down much more earlier. Uh, <clears throat> this is very interesting because we are looking at key support levels being tested. But when you look at the overall picture, this is just that trading range that I've been talking about for a little while now. Look at the E-mini. The E-mini, you can see the 200-period moving average. We went under it this morning. <clears throat> We've been there before many times, gone above it, just wiggling around. What's really going to be important is the low today in the E-mini, which is at 26, sorry, 25 <clears throat> If we test that low today and break it, either today or tomorrow, then there's a real good chance we're going to make a full arch formation and retest the low that was made back, was that April the 2nd? I believe so. Yep, April the 2nd at 2552. But there is a lot of evidence to say <clears throat> that the intense selling isn't uniform. We've got the Dow down 0.99. Let me do this now. I can go through this in, in real time. So the Dow is INDU at minus 238, 23686. It's sitting right on the 200 period moving average as we speak. It's gone below it already. Below today is 23,531. The low that was made April the 2nd was 23,344. Let me just, I think I had that in, but I put it in the other chart. 23,344, 23, I think I said. Yeah. Okay. So with all the news, with everything going on, we haven't taken yet, taken out that low. But what's really important about this is that within the context of, the, of my technicals, the MACD is very negative. Stochastic is only at 25%. It could go down to the teens or even lower. So that's saying that any bounce now cannot just be a one-day bounce. In fact, what we've seen, and this is a little bit different, is that we've had a number of red candles down, a couple of green, and then more red candles down. That's the characteristic of the arch formation. So this is that second arch that I, I put in my chart and said, this is what you're going to watch out for. You can see here in the weekly chart of the Dow, there's that lowercase h that goes to an M, the template. We're pretty much on track. The technicals are still very weak. And now for the first time with that doji candle of April, we're looking at uh, the first three days of May being pretty negative. So we've got a whole month to go. Let's just talk about the monthly chart as the, as the, as the weeks move on. But what's really important now is that the 24,000 uh, 23,990 to 24,050s is going to be pretty strong resistance. Let's go to the S&P, SPX.X. The S&P right now is down 25 at 26.10. And what we're looking at is it too went under its 200 period moving average. It's sitting right on it now. NACD is negative, stochastic is negative. Unbalanced volume has just turned down from the last couple of days. And this is just sideways action. Nothing here to see. It's not, it's not very important chart-wise. What will be very important is a decisive close below the 2610 level, 200 period exponential moving average in the, in the daily. And if there's a bounce above 2628 to 2632 in the next two days, I say, hey, that's good. It's going to have to be a lot higher than that to change the pattern. The QQQs, the NDX 100 down 0.94%. So the Dow is down 1%. S&P is down 0.95. The Qs are down 0.94 at 160.27. Look, here as well, it's it's trading within this triangle formation. Remember the wedge formation, lower lows, sorry, lower highs and higher lows. It hasn't taken out the key support level. That'll happen if it takes out 
at any point if the queues close below 157 that's going to be very negative so let's just continue and we'll talk about um, parameters to look for if the QQQ series the power trust a uh, power shares trust series trading 160.25 is able in the next three by Tuesday of next week if it's trading anywhere in the 162.50 area just making this frustrating up and down uh, narrow range that's going to be important if it breaks down and suddenly you're seeing this thing trade at 150 under 158 that's very negative and over 164 is saying, hey, I'm still in the game. Well, let's go. So we did that. Now, the IWM, which was the one that was holding better, it's only down 0.74. It's still holding best of all. It hasn't broken the left side low of two days ago. It's at 154.30. This is the best acting ETF right now. The iShares Russell 2000 trading in 153.50 down $1.14. But let me tell you, it's not great. It's just the best acting one. It hasn't broken to the upside yet now we get to gold they're going to be so interesting why because gold is trading at 1314 it is up 8.8 .8. it hit the line period moving average of 1319 and then got repelled now it's under the 200 period moving average which is trading at 1316.90 it's trading at 1314.8 uh, point four. If gold is going to have a really strong move, not just a little pop up because uh, the dollar's resting, I'm just saying to you right now, from my visuals, the way I'm looking at the technicals, gold would have to trade above 1332, I'd even say 1335, and have to trade there for about three sessions. It could pull back, but it's got to have a touch of 1335. For at least two out of three sessions, and then I'll say to you, you know what? Gold has established very clearly that it doesn't want to break down, that it's holding in a range, and like the IWM, the Russell 2000, which is looking good but hasn't broken to the upside, but definitely hasn't broken to the downside. So gold is held in the upper range, certainly in the monthly chart, and it hasn't yet broken down. Now let's go to silver, and you'll see something very interesting. <clears throat> Silver broke nicely above the nine period moving average. It wasn't repelled at the nine email. It went above it yesterday and today, but it's, it's having a tough time closing above 16.50. It's trading at 16.45. Hey, the day is young. Anything can happen. Its weekly chart is actually a little bit better than gold's weekly chart, but most importantly, the other parameters. Silver needs to trade in the 16.78-16.85 area and hold there for two out of three sessions, at least touch that area, two out of three, two out of three sessions, and then I'm going to say, oh, okay, now silver and gold are gonna have a pretty decent holding to rallying pattern as the dollar, here we go, we need to put these things together, the dollar breaks down, but the dollar isn't breaking down, the dollar's down 19 cents at 92.60. It is holding beautifully here. And I'll go into a little bit more detail as we look at the currencies when we get back. Technical Friday today, even though it's Thursday, because I will not be here tomorrow. So I'm going to try to cram in as much as I can today. Basil Chapter, Tiger Technicians Hour, Dallas down 2.34. And we'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Are you an options trader that's looking for that extra edge when placing trades? David White will be hosting a webinar on May 16th, which is the Wednesday leading up to options expiration Friday in May, where he'll discuss in depth the methodology he uses for trading options near expiration, including swing trading setups and expiration day trading scenarios. Subscribers to each of Dave's newsletters, Path of Least Resistance and the Technology Insider, gain access to this 60 minute webinar, which will be archived if you cannot attend live. Dave has had some great Great option trades recently for his subscribers. See for yourself the trading methodology he uses when trading options by signing up today for either of his newsletters and we'll see you Wednesday, May 16th at 5 p.m. for option trading near expiration, analyzing swing trades and expiration day scenarios. For all the details and to sign up today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome right, back. Let me just finish this here. A, P, K. This is the USD JPY. This is the yen. Y, B, C, T, E, F. And it goes to a rare G. And that is a little inverted V right there. And that's the down arrow right there. Okay. One of the reasons why I was saying to subscribers, we've had a fantastic run. We are along the dollar that it, you've got to expect some kind of a consolidation. Could be a high level consolidation. We don't know yet. Uh, which would give gold just a little bit of an opportunity to have a breather to, after coming down so sharply. Um, is when you look at the USD JPY, the dollar yen currency pair, and the yen has rallied just together with the, the dollar very, very nicely. Then it made a doji candle yesterday in a leg E, just above the 200 period moving average, that orange uh, moving average right there. Today it pulled back. The MACD has just slightly turned down the stochastics at 91% and very strong unbalanced volume double topped and it's just pulling back a tad in the daily. The weekly chart is still improving. It's gone above the 200 period moving average twice now in two weeks. Let's see if this week is able to close above it. That would be tomorrow. I'm not sure it can. Look at the sharp move down the 120 minute chart and the dollar went to a peak. Look at this right there, peak D. Chapman Wave Peak D's is where the caution flag uh, flashes. So it's pulling back here. And the reason why I call, I'm calling it a digestive phase, meaning with the implication that the dollar should go higher, is that most of the time currencies, when they start a trend, a breakout trend or a breakdown trend, that trend can last for quite a while. Just as sideways, you can think of this as sideways action for, um, for months basically sideways action until two weeks ago, and then it started to break out to the upside. So I'm going to suggest to you that the 200 period moving average in the dollar right at 92.84, with a high today of 92.76, but a high yesterday of 92.83, a penny off that uh, 200 period exponential moving average resistance, is saying to me that the magnet of 92.20 to the uh, in the daily uh, 200 period exponential moving average to the daily nine period moving average of 9180 
to the 9139, which is the, I'm always sure that this is the 14. I just want to check it out. 14. Yep, to the 14 period exponential moving average. That would be the consolidation. And in that interim period, gold can have a bit of a bounce. I'm calling it a bit of a bounce for three reasons. One is, I think in the major sell mode that I've got in the daily and weekly charts of the Dow, the S&P, the Q is just about all of the indexes, key index indexes, not the monthlies yet. It's saying to me that something different is happening and that what, what is different to me is that the people were thinking that it would be yields, it would be all sorts of things. I don't think I heard anyone talking about a breakout in the dollar. I'm saying to you that from the low that was made in September, the three times we've been buying the dollar, the last time was on the uh, 6th of April. This particular breakout looks different to the others because it's got that U-shaped pattern in the weekly. We've taken out the left side high of 92.64. I'd like to see it close above that. That was the high of the week of the 12th of January. Yep, January at 92.64 because if we close above it, your next level of resistance will be 94.22, the high of December the 15th. Um, you know, I just like to go one step at a time. I, I'm not even going to go there. <clears throat> First of all, yeah, I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to say this would be fabulous action on the dollar, fabulous action in the uh, yen. And if you look at the EUR, USD, the euro dollar currency pair, this is the euro, it's breaking down. It's got a little, a tad under the 200 period exponential moving average. The MACD is still very negative. Stochastic's at 5.9%. That's in very oversold territory, but it can say, oversold doesn't mean to say you have to reverse to be, to go to overboard. It just means, hey, you can stay oversold for a long time. And the MACD and stochastic in the weekly charts are still very negative. My bias is to continue to say that the dollar is stronger as a currency then I am looking at, say, the euro. And as a result, there's a euro-gold relationship, and I suspect that that's going to put, continue to put pressure on gold. But that doesn't mean to say that some of the individual gold stocks, look, GLD, how's that? GRLD. GRLD? GR... Grill something? <laughs> GR. Did I just make a mistake here? GOLD, of course, gold. GOLD, Iran gold. Uh, down towards the lows. Uh, GG, one of the very good companies, uh, towards the lows after their peak D top. Um, my favorite is ASA, although we hardly ever trade it. It's a, I like it as a benchmark. It's holding much better. So you've had RGLD, that's what it is. Royal Gold, um, one of the better gold stocks. Monthly chart still looks very good. It's holding. So I'm just saying, you can have some gold stocks. I didn't see any problem there if they're holding well. And even with the technicals fading, some of them are still holding pretty darn well. What I am saying is that my bias now is still to be co to continue looking at uh, the uh, at, at the dollar as being probably stronger than uh, uh, most people would have expected, and that is one of the factors. Together with now we can go to it, the TLT, one of the factors in looking at. I got a telephone going over there a little while. Uh, one of the factors in the market's hesitancy here, but it really, the market has not really broken down. And that's going to be very important. I'm going to go into that. So, technical Friday, I want to go into this technically. Here we go. So, the triple yield charts that I always show for my subscribers every Saturday or Sunday, I do my charts going into Monday so we get a, a good look at it. We can discuss them in detail. What I'm looking at here, <clears throat> the 30-year TYX, the white one, weekly chart is down 19 cents at 31.16. <clears throat> it made a kind of a double top at 32.21, peak C1. Peak C2 is 32.19, just two cents lower. Uh, three cents higher would have made a, a leg D. <clears throat> so with the technicals the way they are, I'm inclined to count this as a, a, a peak. Of consequence, why? Because this is so far a peak E. I don't see any chance by tomorrow to break above the high of last week, which was in the 10-year, the TNX, the brown one, which was 20, 
was 30.35. We're trading right now at 29.38. I just don't see any any reason or any chance to be able to break that, to extend it. So this is going to be a peak E, and I'm almost sure the five-year, the VF, the FVX, five-year cyan-colored T note yield, at 27.70, it will not be able to take out the uh, 28.52 high of last week. With that said, we could we could still get a high level consolidation in yields, but the fact that yields have gone higher than many people thought, the fact that you've got um, gold so weak, the fact that you've got a good in relation to where it has been, the fact that you've got the dollar breaking out. And the fact that the cyclicals are just terrible, and now you've got the semiconductors, the leakers, very weak. I think this bear may, this bear phase is going to last a while long. Puzzle Chapman Dow's down 290. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money Money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30 day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. So I had a quick question in the den while I was going through some of the charts. question was a CX, CMAX, uh, SA, Mexican Cement Company, trading at $5.90, down $0.06, cents, down 1%. Um, what was the question? Has CX Cement bottomed? EPS report last week, uh, blue chunks, but might be priced in now. Uh, yep, chunks of concrete, that is. Um, I, I, you know, all I can say is um, we used to have someone in the den, a, a GG Goofy Golfer. Um, he used to sell to those in the den who wanted to buy a falling knife. He used to sp sell special metal gloves. 
He said, these, are, these metal gloves are for anyone trying to catch a falling knife. That's CX right now. Just be real careful. It could turn around. But you could also say in three days' time, wow, I could have, I could have bought it at 591 and now it's trading at uh, 531. So just be real careful. This is just a falling knife. There's not a good chart formation. Wait for it to form some kind of base. You don't have to get the exact bottom in this. You just need to find uh, some kind of basing. So, yeah, just be real careful. Now, I, my, my thoughts are with Gigi, who passed away a few years ago. Um, and uh, really a very, very clever marketician. Used to trade very specifically and very well. So um, now I want to go back. I want to show you something here. So we were looking at the dollar, technical Friday to know those Thursday. And basically what I'm looking at is the stochastic is at 94% and the MACD is extremely strong. For the MACD's fast moving average, see that green line right up there? For it to even come back to the red line would take about a point and a half at least. It would have to do with uh, time. Remember, time and price are two separate things. You like them to go together, but sometimes you can use time um, because it is as important as price, just as in the market. Basically, look at uh, 23,650 right now. Uh, the S&P at 2,606. We've used up time. We haven't really used up price yet. I think we're going to. And I think that VIX index, which is at 17.60 up $1.63, I think it has a chance to get into the 20s. Just when is going to be the issue? And I think we're going to get a major sell-off and a climactic sell-off that's going to give us a fabulous buy for my subscribers. We just have built, built up a huge cash position, just waiting. Um, I, it, it's a position. Cash is a position, a very good position, in fact, in markets like this. So what I want to do is to say that within the context of the currencies, this breakout in the dollar, the breakout in the yields, these are parts of the factors. But remember, I spoke a month ago and I said, I believe for the first time, we're now looking at a, a geopolitical, socio um, market environment that has a lot of headwinds. The backwind is gone and the headwinds are here. And if you have headwinds, it means you've got to be so specific and so accurate and so good that you can't just throw darts and expect it to work. And therefore, you've got to be way, way more selective. And in that particular context, what I am looking at now is, will gold actually become very important if the XLF, let me just go to that because a bunch of questions came in, XLF as always, if the XLF starts to break, it's at 2665 now, testing the 2655 low that was made beginning of April. If that... XLF, the Select Spider Financial uh, S&P uh, Fund, if it breaks the 25 support at any time in the next two weeks, you might see people saying, wait a minute, I don't like what's, I just don't like what's going on. I think that gold is a place to be for protection, maybe bonds and gold, I don't know yet, I'm going to get to the bonds in a second, but you cannot rule it out. And therefore, I'm not poo-pooing, I'm not dismissing the fact that gold couldn't start a move to the upside. There have to be certain conditions. But the fact that you've been <clears throat> alternating, bit, look at it yesterday, we were down sharply. My chapter with Chin Index, uh, Chin Gauge flashed a signal to say you should have a 9 to 11 point S&P futures rally within two days that takes the, the S&P and the Dow higher. And then there should be a return to the, whatever trend there was. Well, there was a move in the S&P uh, futures that was 11 points, but the, the market ignored it, pulled back. And then the Fed came out and the Dow spiked 57, 65 points. And then it gave everything up and closed down almost 200 points. So that worked. But at the same time, every day, have a look at this. Every day, technical Friday, I want to be a little more technical here. Within the context of the market, Look how big these candles are. This is the this is the daily chart. You're getting look at those tiny little candles. Now you're getting huge candles. We've had a, a move today between 23,836 
and 23,531. That's 300 points. And look, we're only two, we're three hours into the day, and we've already done 300 points. You know, that, that's nothing to sneeze at. 1% um, ish, up and down. So I am saying lower lows and lower highs. The MACD in the daily chart, you can see it's very weak. The stochastic is the one positive thing I'm looking at on the very near term in that it's making this W pattern, which one, a pattern I favor as long as this fast moving average, the green one, if there is a rally and the Dow is able to test once again, we have the 200 period, the nine period moving average of 24,092. Well, that's a long way up. But if it's able to do that over the next two, three days, then you should see the stochastic start to improve and the MACD finally gets squeezed a little bit to the better. So chop, 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 not breaking down per se. Here we are, look at this big move up. Look, here we are, go back to the, um, the two-minute chart, made a peak D, and now we're retesting that peak D in the E-mini. <clears throat> this is suggesting that 26.13, the 200 period moving average, what do I say about moving averages? Use them judiciously. I did not need the 200 period moving average since the two minute chart broke down back at seven, about seven o'clock. Oh, stop, stop, stop. There you go. Back at seven o'clock ish um, on the first, on the third. Huh, that was today, the two minute chart. That, that looked like it was way, way yesterday. No, it's today. And when it broke down, it wasn't important. All of a sudden, this 200 period moving average is becoming important. And there it is. Uh, we're at 2609. It only needs four more points, and it's going to be testing the 200 period moving average. But it has to break and hold above the height was made at peak D at 2610.25. So let's go. Technical Friday. What we want to do is do it technically. Let's look <clears throat> at the XLF. This look at, so the XLF is very weak right now. It's made a lower low. It's gone to 26.46 as a low, took out the low that was made on the second, was it? Yep, on the second of 26.55. If it closes above it and there's a nice turnaround by the end of the day, we could have a rally to the 27.35 level, the nine period moving average. And then we'll have to see maybe a lowercase h goes to a lowercase m. That's all. <clears throat> Technicals, technicals are very weak. Goldman Sachs I got asked about. I also wanted to mention this. Um, Paul says ETFs are going to create a bigger problem in the next downdraft. They have never been tested in a real down market. There is, there, there's an inconceived product that never should have been invented by Wall Street. Yeah, I think there are going to be products like that. I've discussed it with some people. Um, I think you're absolutely right, Paul. I just, I'm not sure this is the phase. I think there's another phase to come. And then it's all hell breaks loose, but not yet. Dow's down 170. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, right, folks. So here's one of the things that I want to look at. You see this particular chart on the left here? I won't say if you know, can't see what it is, that's fine. I want you just to look at the, just to get a nice vision. You see the sharp down move here? Hasn't made a one to one to the downside. In fact, it's stalled just under the 200 period moving average. Made a little lowercase h formation. This larger h formation broke the left side low, very negative. This one's holding the left side low of 95.47. This particular chart is holding at 97.52 right now. The MACD histogram has been improving. The fast moving average, the nine period differential of the uh, MACD, has been closing the gap. And that's reflected by the histogram right there at minus 0.12. Hasn't turned positive yet. It could. Could even do it by the end of the day. The MACD is giving a divergence that says. There's a little bit of strength there, but wait a minute, the stochastic is giving a really good divergence. It's way higher now than it was when it made the low of 95.47, and today's low is 96.06. .06. So that's a good divergence. The on-balance volume made a lower low, but it is right at a point where it could reverse to the upside on the intraday basis. Let's just go back to this chart right here. You see the E-mini? Look at that breakout right through the 200-period exponential moving average in leg C, that's the two-minute, but leg C in the 10-minute chart with very good technicals, I can now put in an up arrow to say there should be a buy mode to at least a D. Might not, but that's what it's looking like. Now, what's really important is you see this two-minute chart right here. I'm going back to the chart we were looking at in a minute. I just need to do this because this is real time. I had a left side, right side price time match based on the Chapman Wave methodology. Let me squeeze this here. From the E-mini high that was made right there at 9.58 this morning, Eastern time of uh, 26.24, pulls back, makes a low just before 11 o'clock at 25.92. Oops, 25.91.25. And then starts to move up, and I chose a, sh a shorter time frame, left side, right side, price time match, which took it to that peak D. Then I had another one using that same midpoint of the high of 18 minutes past 11 at the 26.05.50 high, and I had left side, right side, price time match. Well, it's gone longer and gone shorter in price. This is still outstanding because the stochastic's flat at 94%. It says, at least in the short term, as long as the no stochastic doesn't slide to 84%, then the next uh, three two-minute bars, that's six minutes, uh, it's saying, hey, there's a chance that, yep, it'll get there, but it'll get there late. And that you would have had to use a different midpoint that is plumb line, probably the plumb line right here. I'll do that right now. The plumb line... 
of 1128. So that would be extended out, and that would take you to about 20, yeah, about 12.52. So in about another, maybe another 10 minutes, it could get there. And the target here is 26.24. So I think we've seen a significant turnaround on the short-term basis. So the reason why I didn't want to end, I didn't want to go short or anything earlier this morning, because I said, I, there's just, it doesn't go more than 300 points or so, and then it wants to reverse to the other side. Maybe it'll do that today. I think it's doing that. Now, this particular stock is at 97.90 as we speak. And the MACD is just about to turn up, and it's looking much better. This is the daily chart of the SMHs. Why did I want to bring that up? You see the cup formation, and you see this little mini arch, the little, uh, mini arch here? Well, look, you can get yet another arch formation. I drew this in one of my charts this morning to show, and there it is. So we're getting something that says, wait a minute, you could, in fact, have a nice rebound in the SMHs. The semis, they could go to 99.30, sorry, 98.30. Uh, no, I think I'm right, 90. What is that? 99.30. And then if it takes that 99.30 in the next two days, you've got yourself a nice counter trend bounce. And that's what we're doing. Chop, chop, chop in a range. It's frustrating if you are not doing anything but intraday trading. Or you've got a position, as we have in the dollar, which is really one that we think has the potential to be a longer term buy and hold. I don't know. That's the way we're looking at it. So that's the SMHs. Um, in the den was mentioned that the SMHs are going, Boeing. Let's see where Boeing is trading right now. So the two key intraday moves are, are good. That's the semiconductors, the SMHs, and Boeing, which, of course, is a pretty big player in the market. It's now up 2.84327. I just think this is a bounce in the arch formation. Boeing, to me, is in an intermediate term corrective phase. That's the way I'm looking at it. ITA. ITA, yep, that was one that was holding really, oh, no, it was another one. This one is on the 200 period exponential moving average. This is the um, iShares US Aerospace and Defense. No, it's the PPA that I do. They, they, they're the same. This one made a peak D in the weekly and has pulled back really dramatically. But it is the um, PPA that at least is the one that I followed for years and years. So that's the one I'm just very familiar. They have the same pattern. I'm just saying that's the one I follow. So that hit the 200-period exponential moving average and the 200-period simple moving average, trying to bounce right now. Um, I, I don't think it's going very far, but, yep, it could, it could bounce. It could be a very important move. What was very important is HACK, H-A-C-K. This is one that has had a high-level consolidation. It has not broken down. ETFMG Prime Cybersecurity ETF. Boy, I wouldn't buy it right now. Put it on your list. We've got it on our list. For my, for my subscribers to my opening call. When this thing has a really decent pullback, I think it's going to be a really good buy. It's going to be tough to actually get in because it's not giving up anything. I really don't want to be buying it at the 35s just to go to the 37s. I want to be buying it more towards the 34, 33 area if we can ever get there. That's kind of my, my plan here. Heck is the simple trade here, 35.92, down 22 cents. So a couple of things let me talk about because I don't want to run out of time. I, I, what I do now is going all the way through to Monday because I will not be here tomorrow. See the VIX rallied. It rallied all the way to 18.66. Now it's given some of that back because it's 16.93, still above the nine period moving average, still positive, still up 97 cents. The VIX has been saying to me for weeks now that there is buying of insurance and one of the reasons is it's holding in the teens in the 14 15 16 17 area instead of breaking down and going to 11 and that's saying to me there are a lot of people nervous out there and they are buying insurance and that makes it in play question i had is would you kindly share your preferred chapter wave count on the esm 8 30 minute chart all right technical friday let's go there 30 minute, find the 30 minute chart. Oh, 30, 30, 30, right there. Activate now to try to find where it is. There it is. Here we go. 30 minute ESM, ESM 18. Um, 
This is a new leg A to the upside. It has 26.3490 as the um, the start of big strong resistance levels automated is 26.3220 to uh, 26.3490. That entire area has tremendous resistance. To break above it would be quite an achievement. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Decisions Hour, and the Dow is down down just 100, just 135. S&P down to. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. So just in the last three minutes before I go, and I won't be back until Monday, uh, a bunch of things. I just wanted to look, why why would uh, the SMHs be so strong today? SMHs is Intel. Yep, look at this. Now it's at 98.13. Intel, Intel right now is uh, Dow's only down 79. Very nice. Uh, Intel, yep, it's moving up. Uh, wait, the big daddy of them all is, 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 is. Um, so I want applied materials. Yep, no, it's okay. And uh, LRCX, Glam Research, yeah, it's okay. Uh, I think NVIDIA's part of this matrix. Whoa! NVIDIA's up five at 231.36. Very nice. This is good. Um, it's in a new leg B. Um, it's a gray B, but it's acting very well. It, it could, in fact, get to 235s. And if it breaks above 235, we could test the high that was made back on the 18th of 239th. Very good. Whoa, nice. Um, so that, that's really one of the big reasons. So let's just go quest, quick questions. Uh, TRV, we looked at that yesterday. TRV travelers had a lousy day. 
Uh, another lousy day. Yeah, it's trying to turn. Yeah, th these are these are not good. So U and H, uh, U and H. Uh, what about Chapman wave uh, notation? Yeah, this U and H is holding well in the high level consolidation. United Health Group. So I'm just saying, put it on your list as a potential buy, but I prefer to buy it down at two two twenty two thirty three right now. I just have patience. Try see if we can get to the two twenty five two twenty area. They wake me up again. Goldman Sachs, we just did the uh, financials. Goldman Sachs, yeah, I could try to bounce here. It's a leg G. Um, no, I don't see all that much. Uh, September, October, S&P crash to come. You know, I think this is the cons big consolidation. I think by October, we could be running very strongly. That's the way I'm looking at it now. I'll do that more next week. So we're about to wrap up. A couple of things I want to do. My opening call, my daily newsletter. Uh, 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 tomorrow I'll, I'll be able to I'm hoping I'll be able to do my traders corner and at least the Dow chart I'll send it out uh, early in the morning um, I'll be away but uh, on Monday back to normal again so check out my I will over the weekend I'll have a chance by Sunday night I will have got out a whole bunch of charts I'll try to get some out Saturday we'll see so um, just be careful here selective moves to the upside um be very careful that's all basil chapman signing off ending over to steve rhodes take it away steve no matter what kind of trader you are 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to tom o'brien's gold report whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics, including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Are you an options trader that's looking for that extra edge when placing trades? David White will be hosting a webinar on May 16th, which is the Wednesday leading up to Options Expiration Friday in May, where he'll discuss in depth the methodology he uses for trading options near expiration, including swing trading setups and expiration day trading scenarios. Subscribers to each of Dave's newsletters, Path of Least Resistance and The Technology Insider, gain access to this 60 minute webinar, which will be archived if you cannot attend live. Dave has had some great option trades recently for his subscribers. See for yourself the trading methodology he uses when trading options by signing up today for either of his newsletters and we'll see you Wednesday, May 16th at 5 p.m. for option trading near expiration, analyzing swing trades and expiration day scenarios. For all the details and to sign up today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information,